Tonight, after that celebrity photo hack, how do you keep your cloud secure? Home Depot investigates a massive credit card breach, and the IRS wants to tax the free meals at tech firms. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 163 for September 2nd, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes hiring faster, easier, and cheaper. Post your job to 50-plus job boards with just one click. Try ZipRecruiter for free for a four-day trial now at ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash TN and the number two. Hello, everyone. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right to our top story, which was a targeted attack on a collection of celebrity photos, some which were unclothed, that were accessed via Apple's iCloud and then uploaded to the Internet. It's an interesting story, and it's somewhat complicated to try to uncomplicate things, as Selena Larson, who's a staff writer over at Read Right. Hi, Selena. Welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me, Sarah. Okay, so Apple has gone ahead and denied that this was actually any sort of breach of iCloud or find my iPhone via brute force. Why was that thought was the case in the first place? So there was actually um, a bunch of, of, it was posted on GitHub that this was a way that attackers could actually get this information. And it was kind of a how-to that uh, a programmer had uploaded on GitHub and said, this is how you can do it. Um, it was uh, it was kind of a step-by-step -step tutorial, which eventually... Um, that they said that the Apple had actually patched this flaw. So it was originally a flaw that was discovered by a programmer who then allegedly, who then posted it on GitHub. And that's where um, uh, I believe it was the next web first discovered it. And so um, that they had then said that Apple quickly patched the flaw. So that was, that was the rumor that was circulating initially. And it was kind of floating around there for a while before Apple came out and denied and said that it was actually just a specific targeted attack uh, on these women, these female celebrities specifically. Now, by Apple saying this is, this is a targeted attack on usernames, passwords, and security questions, that's not unlike any hack, really, if you know what the my first pet's name was or what street I grew up on. Perhaps that's one of my reminder questions that could be easily accessed via a Wikipedia page, if you're, especially if you're in the public eye. So is there anything that Apple has not done that makes it more vulnerable than your average cloud storage service? Actually, no. The thing with Apple is that all of your data is backed up into iCloud. All of your pictures, your documents, anything that you have configured to automatically back up. And most consumers, including a lot of, you know, just average consumers like me, I don't necessarily think of iCloud as um, cloud storage, rather just backing up my phone. So that's something that you think of. It's like, oh, these photos are going to be safe for later. They're not like, say, Dropbox or um, Google Drive, where you're physically saving a file into a cloud storage account. So that's what that's what we, I think why this is a little bit, not necessarily different, but kind of unnerving to some users who might just assume that iCloud is just backing up their phone instead of actually storing their data on supposedly secure servers. Now, I know Apple uh, will allow a user to turn on two-factor uh, authentication, which would be something like entering a password and then getting a number code sent to my phone, which then I, you know, it's, it's, it's two different um, layers of authentication, mm -hmm. but it doesn't force two-factor auth. Should it in light of something like this? You know, it's security people say this all the time. Tech people say this all the time. You should have two-factor authentication. Part of the reason why people don't do it is it's very inconvenient. Mm. Um, you have to have your phone handy to receive the text message or open it on an app. You have to, it, it's an extra couple of steps that you generally don't really want to take if you're, especially if you're in a hurry, if you're constantly logging into the same account over and over. In Apple's case, I think I think it would be smart to require two-factor authentication, but I think a lot of users who might not be as tech savvy, uh, who use Apple products, for instance, I think about my mom who has an iPad and her laptop and an iPhone. Uh, I think about her, she probably doesn't even realize what two-step authentication is. So I think that that's something that people definitely need to be paying attention to and something that could have prevented an attack like this. You know, the, uh, something like this where it's a celebrity and there's, you know, potentially scandalous photos, it's almost beside the point, isn't it, really? I mean, th these are people who are well-known, so that there's, there's some name recognition here. But you and I were talking before the show, the kind of photo that you might not want shared with the world really isn't the point. It's the fact that companies 
really may be on the hook, especially a company like Apple. In, in just a week from today, they've got a big iPhone announcement or a big event that supposedly is the iPhone announcement. This is really bad press for a company who can do the right thing, even if it is, as you mentioned, inconvenient for the average user. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, in their statement, Apple said that it was a targeted attack to these specific celebrities. But any one of us could be a targeted attack. I mean, you could be the target. And um, I think what's kind of jarring for us is like we see these we see these celebrities as these untouchable people who aren't like everybody else. But when something like this happens, it is really eye opening. It's like, wow, you know, this could happen to me. And I myself this weekend went through my iCloud information and I definitely deleted some pictures in there. You know, those selfies that you take 10 different times before you actually <laughs> upload one to Instagram. I mean, I wouldn't want those all over the internet. <laughs> so I, I guess to sum up this uh, interesting tale uh, where some people were obviously embarrassed and felt that their privacy was violated, is better encryption the answer here? Choosing better passwords? Is Apple going to buy a password company? I mean, where do we go from here? So the first thing that you have to do that everyone should do that I know a lot of people were doing this weekend is going through all of your accounts, including iCloud, uh, to change your passwords to make sure all of your information is secure. The one thing the, the one thing that's the first line of defense is your username and your password and your security questions. Um, I know some people suggest not even using security questions because they can be so easily discovered through a Facebook or Twitter search or if you are a well-known person on a Wikipedia page. Um, it, that's the first thing that you have to do. And then you can also look at other storage services if you are using a lot of secure documents that you don't necessarily want shared with uh, shared with the world, a lot of personal information. There are ways that you can encrypt your data in the cloud. You can use services like Spider Oak uh, that automatically encrypt it. And so Spider Oak, the company, has no way of even knowing what's stored in their servers. Uh, but one thing that Apple should do a lot better is make the process easier for changing your Apple ID and passwords. I know that uh, I saw someone on Twitter earlier today tried to in, uh, use or sign up for two-factor authentication on her Apple ID, and there was a three-day waiting period that before she could even enable two-factor authentication. So the whole process of changing your personal data is something that Apple needs to improve upon. Otherwise, people aren't going to take the time. They aren't going to take the steps required. They're just going to say, you know what, I'm fine as it is. It'll never happen to me until it actually happens. And then they're just, they're screwed. Selena Larson writes for Read Write and is a now regular contributor to, uh, to Tech News Tonight. Thanks so much for joining us and let folks know where they can read more of your work. Of course. Yeah, I'm on readwrite.com. And also you can reach out on Twitter at Selena Larson. Thanks, Selena. Thank you so much. All right, coming up a little later in the show, NASA wants to send tweets to an asteroid. I am serious. We've also got our tech feed. But first, are you hiring? If so, do you know where to post a job to find the best candidates? You might think you know, but ZipRecruiter not only lets you post to over 50 job boards, but they also have a resume database that's really well stocked. You can search from over 4 million resumes. Thousands of new ones are added daily. And you don't even have to search every day. That might sound cumbersome to you. ZipRecruiter will send you resume alerts when new candidates match your search. You can find candidates in pretty much any city, industry, all nationwide. Just post once, and those qualified candidates will start to roll in via ZipRecruiter's interface. Once you have your candidates, ZipRecruiter makes it easy to review them. Find out today why ZipRecruiter has been used by over 200,000 businesses. Right now, TN2 viewers and listeners can try ZipRecruiter for a free four-day trial. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash TN and the number two. And we thank ZipRecruiter for their support of Tech News Tonight. All right, let's move on to today's tech feed. Home Depot stores may be the source of a new batch of stolen credit and debit cards that went on sale this morning in what's known as a cybercrime underground. This is according to multiple banks that say they're seeing evidence to support that. Home Depot says it's working with banks and law enforcement agencies to investigate reports of suspicious activity. It's not clear how many stores are impacted, but the breach could extend across the 2,200 Home Depot stores across the United States, plus 287 stores outside the U.S., including Canada, Guam, Mexico, and Puerto Rico. Several banks contacted by Krebs on security.com say that they believe the breach may extend back to late April or early May of this year.
Another day, another setback for a disruptive ride-hailing service, Uber. A court in Frankfurt has banned Uber's most popular service from operating in the country until a hearing later this year on whether it competes with local taxis unfairly. Uber allows people to use their smartphones to book rides with freelance drivers. And the company says it will continue operating in Germany and will also appeal the court's decision. But that could mean fines in Germany of up to 250,000 euros or even its local employees going to jail for up to six months if the company violates the temporary injunction, which was made last week and became public today. The ban comes out of the company's Uber Pop product that connects drivers with potential customers, Uber's premium product, which is Uber Black, which uses luxury sedans and chauffeurs, is not actually affected by the court's decision. The U.S. Internal Revenue Service, also known as the IRS, also known as Party Central, is arguing that free meals at companies like the ones offered at Google or Twitter, really any startup that gives free food to its employees, Twit is one of them, is a taxable fringe benefit, which is not unlike the personal use of a company car or the value of employer-paid life insurance coverage above the IRS threshold of $50,000. The IRS is focusing new attention in recent months during routine audits of some companies, say tax lawyers speaking to the Wall Street Journal. Specifically, when employers haven't been withholding taxes related to the meals, the IRS would like to tax that amount up to 30% of the meal's fair market value. Last week, the IRS and the U.S. Treasury Department included taxation of employer-provided meals in their annual list of top tax priorities for the fiscal year ending next June. The agency said they intend to issue new guidance on the matter, but gave no specifics about timing. Google may be renowned for its extremely attractive cafeteria food. I ate there once. It was pretty good. But sometimes the company needs a little rebranding. This time it's renamed its enterprise business product, something that's a lot catchier. Google for work. Yeah, let's take out that enterprise word altogether. Google for Work president Amit Singh says it's more than just a name change, but a beginning of a change in, quote, how we launch products and communicate new features. Going forward, all products under the Google for Work umbrella, such as Drive or Maps or Hangouts, will also have that Google for Work moniker added to the end of their name. All right, finally, how would you like a little, oh, let's say a love note sent to an asteroid called Bennu? I'm not even kidding. NASA is asking the public to submit messages and images shared via social media for a time capsule that it will launch in 2016 alongside a scientific mission to that asteroid called Bennu. The capsule is scheduled to reach Bennu in 2019 and then return to Earth in 2023 with a sample of the asteroid, which is 1,760 feet wide. It's kind of a big asteroid. You, could, you have to choose your message carefully, though, because NASA will only select 50 tweets and 50 images from the submissions that it receives between September 2nd and September 30th. The entry should be space-themed, focusing on solar system exploration in 2014 and predictions for 2023. If you want to participate, you can use the hashtag Asteroid Mission on Twitter or Instagram to submit an idea and hold the nude selfies. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write us with feedback at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss Tech News Today. That is tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane, and thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.